Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. I always plan to have like certain videos, like 7 minutes, 10 minutes, I say shorter, and then they end up being like 14 minutes. So I guess shorter is, instead of 15, 14 minutes. But uh, hopefully I'm not boring you. You know, um, I just, once it gets going, we get going here and I, uh, time just gets, uh, gets by me. So, all right, we uh, left off in the last video, uh, part two where we were talking about the degradation of U.S. culture and society, really just all of these, what they call democratic countries. Um, I don't have anything against democracy. It's just that we've never had democracy. So what we've had is representative democracy, people that are represented, uh, and it just turns into a melee, uh, where engineer consent is used uh, to control uh, the masses of, of, of people. So... I think one of the one of the biggest examples was the 60s, 70s, where you saw the America really changing. Um, uh, some people call it cultural Marxist, um, subverting American culture and changing it. And there was a lot of people that were against it, and uh, they felt basically powerless. And uh, what what I'm talking about is the counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s. They called it civil rights. And yet, in reality, down the road, we're more enslaved than we ever have been, more brainwashed, and more broke. Christian schools shred $20,000 in literature over a satanic peace sign. A Christian school in the Netherlands said it sent about $20,000 worth of student-created literature to the shredder after officials did research on Google and determined that a peace sign was a symbol used by a Satanist. So it says here that the school allowed students a say in creating a diary that included a calendar, tips, jokes, and Bible scripture, but it does not allow any items that are considered to be debauchery like pop music, movie stars, fashion, and cartoons. Then um, they use that word as a negative connotation, as a slant, uh, because these are all things that are part of the culture uh, creation industry. They create culture for people. It doesn't come from the grassroots. All of your culture is gone. All of your connection... To your, uh, to your kinsmen, as they say, you, you know, your ancestors is gone. All of your, uh, your uh, little goofy traditions that every, that all these different nationalities did is gone. You have no connection to that, and now you have no connection to the earth. Now there's been a war on nature, and all you're left with is this empty, hollow consumerism, um, and entertainment to make you feel better. So it goes on here, it says that this is the Nero cross that stood in Roman times for the persecution or prosecution, sorry, torture and killing of Christians. It said even this symbol in our time has been associated with occultism. It says, in fact, this is the article, in fact, the peace symbol was created in 1958 by British artist Gerald Holton as a campaign against nuclear war. So is that true? I don't know. So it goes on here and it says that... Um, the counterculture that was foisted on the 1960s adolescent youth of America is not merely uh, analogous to the ancient cult of ISIS. It is a literal resurrection of the uh, cult down to the popularization of the ISIS cross, the peace symbol. The ISIS cross, the peace symbol, is the counterculture's most frequently used symbol. So I guess it would be one thing if people knew that they were pagans, right? They knew who their gods were. They knew what they were doing. Um, but it's another to to have a high priesthood of people that um, that want to rule the entire planet, and Eldrick Huxley, you know, was basically a part of this and that, saying that um, it's an open conspiracy. That there'll be an organization of intelligent and basically wealthy men. H. Uh, G. Wells called it what the one world brain, which would function as a police of the mind. But it says here that. Uh, but Wells' popular writings, Time Machine, and uh, those of his protégés, Eldix Huxley and George Orwell, were written, a mass, written as mass appeal, organizing documents on behalf of one world order. Only in the United States are these science fiction classics, in quotes, taught in grade schools as tax against fascism. The person goes under, under Wells' tutelage. Huxley was first introduced to Aleister Crowley, so there you go. Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball smashes One Direction's Vivo record. So this is unbelievable. I actually watched about three quarters of this video, and it's just horrible. I mean, it's basically like Madonna's Pop It Don't Preach video uh, all over again. She's basically making out with a sledgehammer and wrecking ball.
writing it. So what you're seeing is magic. It's to me, it's black magic, and it's being performed on a grand scale. Um, no big conspiracy here. Just using the monetary, the money system, uh, and all that. You're, you're performing uh, rituals. Um, all that stuff with the twerking, and all that stuff surrounding Miley Cyrus, the media attention. That was focusing energy. When they get your focus, your attention, that's magic, and they divert it towards something like this, which would be Miley Cyrus, the kind of the androgynous. Uh, you know, that's the update uh, from Madonna's. She's more androgynous now. The blending of the male and female. And uh, it's talking about the, you know, the wrecking ball. It's talking about um, uh, the destruction of the family, destruction of culture. And uh, I think I, if I interpreted what she was saying, <clears throat> she blames her parents, who of course are a result of social engineering and destruction of the family uh, due to the same type of rejection uh, through cultural Marxism and the media promoting all this back in the 60s. So, uh, And then she basically seems to me to be proud of all this, that she rejected against this. Of course, in rejecting that and running the other way, she's just running further down the rabbit trap, right? Where they want her to go, where they want the followers to go. So, you know, she was groomed by what Dizzy bought, uh, groomed uh, young people that are getting older, and that's going to be the role model. So, that's what the culture industry is. So, it's currently approaching 22 million views. Yeah, see, revealing, uh, it says even more revealing their controversial VMA performance. Well, why did she do that? So, it was building up for this. Transgender German man becomes first in Europe to have babies. So basically, a woman gave birth to a baby. So everybody's surprised and clap and cheer, right? Unidentified uh, woman who calls herself a man gave birth in March to a boy at home in Berlin. The father was born a woman and has taken hormones to be a man. He maintained female reproductive organs and used a sperm donor. So he insisted on home birth because he refused to be listed as the mother on any hospital documents. A legal requirement uh, says here in Germany. Officially, the child who was born on March 18th does not have a mother, only a father. Socialist publication, we can change the world through abortion and gay marriage. So I don't like the term socialism because it's hardly ever that you actually really see it. You hear a lot of these... Americans, uh, uh, neoconservatives and moderate conservatives, whatever they call themselves, uh, blaming, you know, calling welfare uh, to poor people as socialism. And, uh, you know, what we have really is a huge amount of wealth in the form of corporate welfare to banks and uh, especially the arms industry. But it says here a publication of the International Socialist Movement has explicitly stated that it is promoting abortion and gay marriage as part of a multi pronged campaign to replace global capitalism with Marxism. So that's what you have to think about, right? Because with communism, people back in the day, they really, there was an actual party besides the Communist Party in Russia that were, they weren't for authoritarianism. And then all of a sudden came Stalin and the Bolsheviks, the basically Jews, that uh, instituted this real hardcore authoritarian. Um, a system where people did not have a real democracy, where they weren't uh, making decisions uh, individually, collectively, I like to say. You know, people think, oh, what? What is that? What is that? But they say here that they proudly, uh, the ISO proudly stands in the tradition of revolutionary socialists Karl Marx, Lenin, and Trotsky. The article says here that was uh, about the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's March in Washington. It was hailed the socially liberal views of young people, uh, women and minorities, the same groups Obama appealed to during his campaign. Interesting, right? Look at this. It says here that um, today's young people, he hoped, would carry on a social revolution by waging war in the family. When you break the statistics down by age and race and gender, you see what the powers that be are afraid of, right? Like Jews, like Marx and Trotsky and all them. Some 68% of people between the ages of 18, 34, 60% of women, 60% of people of color support gay marriage compared to just 46% of people over the age of 50 and 49% of men, 53% of whites. So it really sucks because, you know, they infiltrate these groups that, that, that really do want to fight authoritarianism and, and help themselves and their society and their people. And... Uh, they get in there and they claim these names, these titles, and then they just ruin the idea. 
but that's what uh, controlled opposition and subversion of uh, these controlled groups are all about. Quebec calls for ban on wearing symbols of faith. So their separatist government released a plan on Tuesday to ban government workers from judges to daycare employees from wearing overt and suspicious or conspicuous religious symbols as part of the Charter of Quebec values. So the multiculturalism minister said that they would challenge any law that they deem unconstitutional. Outrageous toy company creates a crystal meth laboratory for children with Breaking Bad play sets. Children can now build their own drug dens with a shocking new play kit inspired by TV show Breaking Bad. So branded Super Lab lets any child or adult recreate Walter White's notorious crystal meth lab, complete with protective mass, drug paraphernalia, uh, figurines, and a version of a car from the show. Infants can even reenact scenes from the series. Looks uh, similar to a classic Lego set. Well, Bricking Bad allows children or adults to construct the industrial meth lab set up by Walter White and his drug boss. So this is, yeah, this is what it was kind of about, these shows, Breaking Bad, you know. The part of this push where you see these actors um, that are normally seen to be kind of lighthearted, uh, decent people, uh, like our best example, Matthew McConaughey, all in these real dark, you know, gone bad type shows and movies. Again, that's part of the programming. Uh, Brian Cranston, that's his name. Uh, were healthier and of course his his what his career is blown up blown up man just look at him on imd and anyone that does that their careers blow up afterwards uh, we're healthier happier nation's collective well-being balloons this is from australian from australia it says it's a boom politicians ignore the collective well-being has ballooned more than 250 billion a year since the last election index takes into account national income know-how the environment health inequality and job satisfaction. So it goes on here and it says that, um, however, two chronic health problems, obesity and mental illness, are damaging all Australia's collective well-being. So that's the weaponized food to make them feel full as their uh, wealth is going out the window. And um, mental illness, because this world is crazy and it's getting crazier, a part of the engineering. This is a very unnatural way of living and it's causing people to be depressed and going mad. So they're not happier, they're not healthier. We live longer but sicker, remember that? As chronic diseases rise, so they want to make money off you uh, while they're killing you as well. So, And if you want to be able to live longer, you better be able to pay up. They bl blame smoking and drinking alcohol, and it has nothing to do with chemtrails, has nothing to do with the food, poison food, the poison air, the poison uh, liquids, prescription, you know, this, the prescription drugs, now the choice of most Americans imported says here Americans are becoming ever more dependent on prescription drugs. 70% of Americans says here are on at least one prescription drug and says here more than half take two. And many of these drugs are deadly. Prescription drugs kill more Brits than heroin and cocaine. UK doctors have come under fire after new figures showed more than patients died from overdosing on prescription drugs and heroin and cocaine abuses in 2012. They said the government has done little to prevent overdoses from these prescription drugs. They said that can be a long-term addiction. There's very little support for the addicts. It says lives are being destroyed and people are being left without help and support that they need. Well, it's just another form like entertainment, like I said, and shopping that, that helps prevent people from uh, basically rebelling against the government and calling it what it is, illegitimate. Best times for the 1% since the 1920s. The gulf between the richest 1% and the rest of America is the wide, widest it's been since the roaring 20s. The very wealthiest Americans earn more than 19% of the country's household income last year, their biggest year since 1928, the year before the stock market crashed, and the top 10% captured a record 48% of total earnings last year. It says U.S. income inequality has been growing for almost three decades, and it grew against last year. They said uh, it surged last year in part because they cash in on stock holdings to avoid higher capital gain taxes that took effect in January. And in 2012, the incomes of the top 1% rose nearly 20%. So top 1% rose nearly 20% compared with a 1% increase for the remaining 99%. Global billionaire population tops 2,000, so it's not that special being a billionaire anymore. A study finds the population of billionaires has surged past 2,000. Their combined wealth totals 6.5 trillion, so it's more than the combined GDP of France and Germany. So, and this is the priest class, right? Their religion is the monetary system, or God is the dollar, or whatever.
and the Great Recession cost each household between $50,000 and $120,000. Thank you.